What's going on guys? We're back with some more patch notes. Psyonix is coming out with a ton of patches lately. We had one in September, we already have one again in October, and it's the beginning of October. So, lots of patches coming out from Psyonix, and we're going to go over what exactly is in these patch... Uh, well, what's in this patch and what's in these patch notes. So, let's go right to it. We're, we'll skip over the headlines because that's going to be referenced again. But obviously, Aquadome is going to be in here. Uh, so let's go new content. Yeah, so we got Aquadome arena has been added to all casual and competitive playlists So the reason why it's in competitive is because it is a standard arena. It's exactly the same as DFH utopia All the other ones urban Back with I can't even remember what manfield uh, So it's the exact same as those arenas. So that's why it's going straight into competitive right away Let's hope there's no weird bounces uh, but Sinex lately has been really good about getting rid of, uh, most of these bounces, so we should be pretty good to go, but basically it's uh, underwater, it's very Bioshock themed, uh, so definitely go check out that arena. Next up, we actually get, uh, some new antennas, uh, that'll be uncommon, it'll be Harpoon, Trident, and Starfish, it's all water type, um, items, and... So what used to happen with the DLC packs is they would uh, do like a $4 DLC pack with the cars and then you would also get all the items. And now instead that they're starting to give out the items for free and just put them as like an uncommon item and then just still have the cars but in two separate packs for $1.99. So it's basically the same thing. Um, they added a community flag RLCS. So that's nice. Uh, and then uh, yeah, I'm... I'm surprised they haven't added more community flags. There's been a lot of other good community-driven stuff for Rocket League that has not been added. Next up, we got the DLC cars added. Proteus DLC car, it has six decals. Once uh, the patch actually goes live, because as of this recording, it is not live, I will go over both of the DLC cars and all their decals in case you want to see them uh, before you buy. Which I think you can do anyway in the showroom. But whatever, I'll still do it anyway. Why not? Um, so we got the Proteus and the Triton. So right here is the Triton car. The Proteus is very um, Grog-like with like little arms. I'm not a huge fan of these two DLC cars. Uh, like the Triton's okay. It's not that bad. The other one, Proteus isn't fantastic. We've talked about this before on a uh, DFH locker room, but. Um, who knows, maybe I'll learn to love them. But they will have very similar hitboxes to the Octane and the Dominus. The Triton will be very similar to the Dominus. Sinex is really, really trying to make all the cars very similar to the Octane or very similar to the Dominus or Breakout. Uh, it's like a mix in between there. Uh, it seems like uh, that's the two cars most of the community liked. So they're trying to get the hitboxes and handle and all to be very similar to that. Next up, Rocket Trails. Very rare. We got Ink and Treasure. So again, like these items used to be inside the DLC. Now they're coming out uh, as just rare items. Then we got a new topper as well, the Clamshell. Uh, wheels, we got some rare wheels. Uh, Asterius, I probably said that wrong. And Zeta. And then Painted Items. So this is really cool. They've added a ton of new painted wheels. Uh, it seems like that's the most popular item in the game is everyone wants painted wheels of one type or another so they've added a ton of wheels some of these are from the uh default list of wheels and some of these are from some of the updates that have come out but here's the list of all of those we have alchemist almas dc falco invader neptune octavian oem spider stern velos and vortex all these guys are going to get painted wheels so that means hopefully we get more drops of painted wheels right now it's been extremely rare to get painted wheels and then usually like you never get the color that you want obviously because that's just you know luck uh hopefully this bumps up the painted wheels drops because there's so many more so it might get mixed in with all the uh of all the other items more but i'm not sure about that so we'll see when uh the patch actually hits and uh once we start seeing some people play for a while next up they added some achievements i actually did a trophy slash achievement uh video about uh rumble and i was surprised that they didn't have any in there and i think it's usually like you need some type of paid dlc to come with it I could be wrong there, but uh, like a lot of people are saying, they there was some uh, like achievements for other updates, but usually it always had paid DLC tied to it. So I don't know why 
that is, but that might be a rule for some reason. So anyway, we got seven new achievements. Win the MVP award. That goes into overtime. GG. Uh, okay, so that's a pretty simple one. Not sure why that is an achievement, but okay. Trifecta, score a goal, save a shot, and assist a teammate all in a single game. Again, not sure why that's in there. Both of these seem very, very easy to get. Um, I'm surprised they weren't more rumble-based. But uh, this one finally is. Uh, infinite power. I'll activate every power-up in Rocket League Rumble. That makes sense. So you can try every single power-up. And they want you to try out their new mode, uh, Rumble. Next up, Stop Cold. Freeze an opponent's shot before it can score. This one I like because it's an actual power-up themed achievement. I just wish there was more of those instead of some simple ones like Trifecta and GG. Uh, then Sea Turtle, head to the Akadome map and score a goal while flipped on your back. Anytime there's an eternal achievement, I will love it. Love it right here. We need more turtle achievements because turtle one is the best thing ever. Get up Mr. Bubbles, very Bioshock inspired name. Uh, uh, equip the Bubbles rocket trail and score an aerial goal while playing an Aquadome map. That's fine too with me. Like as long as they're trying to push new features like the Aquadome map, I'm fine with achievements like that. That's why I'm not a huge fan of GG and Trifecta because they're just like random that you're going to get them really really quickly and then rocket a genocider don't really like this one either make 535 shots on goal like you're just going to get that eventually and again it's not really themed or um it doesn't really push you to try out new features of the game so i'm not really sure why it's in there it's just kind of one that everyone's just going to get over time uh but i guess it's going to take a little while for people to get so there's that i guess i mean uh considering like an average maybe three shots a game and that's if it's like a very even game that still doesn't take that long a little under 200 games uh well i guess that's a lot but but if you're doing like 1v1s then you can get that a lot quicker because you're gonna wind up probably more around the 10 shot range or even more than that uh so if you really want that achievement quickly probably go into ones or even twos is probably a good bet to get some extra shots on net next up changes and updates we got champions crate number three uh so these can be found rarely uh, after online matches they have not said if they're going to be weighted differently from champions crate one and two i assume it'll be the same so that means champions crate three will be extremely rare because you're going to have to try and fight it out against the other two crates w when you're getting drops and everyone's going to want champion crate three compared to champion crate one and two because those are old news so uh one of the new items of course in it is the breakout type s import body so that's the one import body uh for this crate which is different from the other two crates because they both had two import bodies each so this one's a little different i assume it'll have 15 items again like the other ones but i'm not positive um we'll have to see once the update hits and again we'll make some videos about other features of the update uh like as it comes out Next up, we got Roadhog and Hotshot Battle Course have received a visual upgrade. They've, like, it's just a slight uh, upgrade to make them look a little bit better. I, I don't have the picture here. Uh, and I guess they didn't feel it was that important to put a picture in their patch notes. So, there you have it. <laughs> uh, then we got Hotshot's Handling and Hitbox have been standardized against similar cars. So, again, uh, the big thing here, they're trying to standardize all hitboxes and handling to close to the Dominus or Breakout or the Octane. Then we got Roadhog is unchanged aside from visual updates. Okay. Rumble mode has received a few balance adjustments. So it's mostly spike power up because everyone thought spike was just a little bit OP. And uh, like people, some people think it's not necessarily OP because you can hold counter items. But it, it really is one of the few items that you have to hold a counter item to compete against it. Uh, maybe that in the plunger. Like I'm surprised that the plunger hasn't been changed at all either it actually gets a buff here because now the plunger and haymaker power-ups can now affect the ball that's attached to the spiker so if you plunge the ball the car plus the ball will come your way i'm not sure how powerful it's going to be same with the haymaker i'm not sure how powerful it'll be but uh this just makes the plunger even better because the plunger like i always thought was probably tier one items with spike and now the plunger just got even better because it can also counter spike. Uh, so plunger is going to be really important to get during rumble matches. If you're trying to, you know, like win a rumble tournament or compete. Usually people are playing or just having some fun with it. But we'll see. And players using the spike power up are, are less uh, agile than before. Now I'm not sure what this means. We, have, we still have to see. 
Uh, will you turn slower on the ground, or will it only be in the air where you can't air roll as much, so you can't just flip the ball around your car a lot? Uh, so we'll have to see how that is. Will you also go slower? Not sure. Um, so we'll have to see with that. But uh, I think it's pretty good change to spike power-up. Spike power-up is definitely a lot weaker now, depending on how uh, agile you are. Uh, that's really going to affect some things. But there's a lot more counters to it, so it means you will have to hold an item, but most of the items counter it now. So at least there's that. Next up, we got the Cosmic Arena. So this one I love. In the Rocket Labs play, this has been updated. Goals have increased in size to be consistent with other arenas. So the goal in Cosmic was actually shorter than all other arenas, which most of us were really perplexed about because the ramp in front of the net basically like adds an extra defender. So why make them the goal smaller? And I think that's just because th that's what the size was in the um, original game, Start BC. Uh, so they made the goal consistent with other arenas. Now, I was actually hoping that, that the goal would be increased in size past other arenas. Um, but I can see why they wouldn't want to do that because then if you're playing goalie and net, it's a little awkward to have a different size net. Uh, but I think it would have helped a lot because that ramp is really... Uh, um, it's a really good defender for breakaways or for just uh, uh, just in general for shots. So, it's, uh, Cosmic is going to be a really defensive map still. Uh, but I do like that they are trying to fix some stuff with it. Which means maybe we'll get it in rank play eventually. Maybe it'll be the new reskin map. Who knows? Uh, walls are now standard. Vertically straight instead of angled. So, it's less dome-y. And it's more of like the normal maps. Uh, and then the bottom wall curves are uh, the same as other maps again, which, like, I think is a good thing because they're trying to make the curves very similar on most maps, so it's not confusing for players. Uh, the top wall curves, such as Salem, have also been standardized. Again, same reasoning. It's better to have similar curves on most of the maps, which I like, but I uh, do like the different shapes of the maps. But I do like that they try and keep some of the curves very similar. It adds a little bit of like, all right, so we change the map a little bit, but we don't change it too much is uh, one of the things I brought up a lot in uh, DFH locker rooms. Like, I want to see small changes to maps rather than everything changed in the map so people can get used to it a little bit better. Ceiling height has been reduced on Cosmic as well. So I wonder how that's going to play. I'm not sure what the height is. Um, I assume it's probably more near, like, the normal maps. And so when you're up near your goal, you're going to be a lot closer to the ceilings because you're up on those ramps. Next up, the Octagon Arena as well. Corners... Between the wall sections are now smoothers to make it easier to push the ball around the wall curves. I'm not sure how I feel about this one because I thought it was kind of neat that um, it was less wall play and it was more ground game. Uh, so those uh, angles made it so you couldn't do as much on the walls. But, I mean, like, it's not the end of the world. Like, I think it'll still be pretty good. And then the bottom wall curves, again, are standardized to the standard map layouts, which, again, is good because you want to keep, like, curves especially... You want to keep very similar because it's really hard to read off uh, curves of the wall anyway. So, like, if you change them from the map to map, it makes it even more difficult. So, I think that's a pretty good change. And then bug fixes. They fix an issue in Roman mode where magnetizer and spike power-ups cause a ton of ball touches. Okay. And they fix an issue that cause, uh, cause goals to be incorrectly credited if a player touches the wall with a magnetizer or spike power-up. So this one was weird because, because I know magnetizer, once you get it magnetized to your car, you get an automatical. I would assume that would still be the case, but they're saying some weird stuff with uh, with how goals are incorrectly credited. So we'll see. Uh, one thing that happened a lot, though, um, if you use the magnetizer or a spike, it would be an unassisted goal, like no matter what. Um, so maybe that's where some of the things got fixed. Um, I haven't seen too much with the spike power-up besides that, but, you know... Either way, bug fixes are good, but that's everything in this patch, guys. This is patch number 1.24. Comes, I think, less than a month since the last patch, which was the giant patch in September. So, really cool signings to get these patches out really quickly. Hopefully, we get one every month. That would be amazing. And I love adding more crates, so people that enjoy uh, using the crate system, they have uh, some more things to unlock. And, of course, the money from the keys, at least partially, will go to the esports scene. So, that's always good to see that. Uh, but, yeah. Pretty cool patch here. Not a huge fan of the actual paid DLC cars. 
Uh, but you know, like some people might love them. I I'm just not a big fan of them. And then I'm not a fan that it's just a standard map. Never a fan of adding more maps that are exactly the same. But hey, it does look pretty, and we'll see how it plays. Even though we kind of know how it plays. Hopefully no weird bounces. But that'll do it, guys, for this video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.